Hi everybody, I'm Ali Tavakoli and this is part 13 of our UML tutorial series, State Machine Diagram. So if you're ready, let's get started. State Machine Diagram describes different states of an object in a system and the object may act differently according to its current state. These states are controlled by external or internal events, obviously. Generally, it defines states and it used to model lifetime of an object. It's useful to model reactive systems, I mean systems that respond to external or internal events. So here is an example of a state machine diagram. This is our state with eating and it will transit to the next state which is full by a transition arrow which has the transition description and the transition description description itself contains different parts such as trigger guard condition and transitional behavior uh, we will get uh, up here and i will explain all of these examples in more details later we also have some uh, terms uh, such as internal behavior state or composite state. So, but first, let's take a look and see for whom a state machine diagram is. System designers and developers. What is its purpose? To model lifetime of a reactive system. Important elements, state and transition arrow. Points to consider. So now you may ask that uh, how states look like in code. Well, imagine our class has a status attribute and the states that we draw in the diagram will be the values of that attribute. Transitions occur when methods of our class are invoked. So that's how we code uh, states in a programming language. Now, what is state internal behavior? It's a state that itself changes some internal states inside of itself. When drawing a state internal behavior, we should also write internal behavior, which contains entry point, which is actually the event that should be called in order to enter the whole state internal behavior. It also actually contains do, which is an ongoing job that we're going to do in this state, and it contains exit, which is uh, what should happen when we're exiting the whole state, I mean, after the do job. And unlike do behavior, entry and exit behaviors cannot be interrupted. So you may say that how the do behavior can be interrupted? Well, when the internal transitions guard evaluates to true. So, uh, in the state internal behavior, uh, when we write the actually internal behavior, we also need to write internal transitions, which is exactly like normal transition arrows. And they show what the state does if the guard statement of the transition evaluates to true. Now let's take a look at this and see what is composite state. It shows the time that two states are going to happen at the same time. So don't worry if you couldn't still uh, understand clearly what all these terms mean. We will get to uh, them uh, when we have taken a look at, at the diagrams. Uh, let's see what are the steps to draw the state machine diagram. First, think about from which event and state the system is going to get started and draw the needed state. Then we continue and draw all of the other changing states. So let's go all the way up here and take a look at our examples. Here we have an, a state machine example. We have two diagrams, which here, this one and this one, which are going to actually do the same thing. I mean, demonstrating the different states of eating process. But the difference between these two state machine diagrams is that in this second one, we draw transitions and transition behavior as receive and send signals 
to more focus on the transitions and make the diagram more readable. So in here, we start our process by the initial state notation. Then we will get to our first state, which is eating. And then we will go to the eat. And uh, here we have to make a choice. If the eaten food is less than the capacity, then we should return to the eating state again. But if the eaten food equals to capacity, then we will go here and say I'm full and transit to the full state and then our process ends. Here, uh, again, the same thing is going to happen. We will start our process by the initial state uh, notation. Uh, then we will go to our first state, which is eating. But unlike the other diagram, which we have shown the transition behavior by the receive and send signals, here we are going to use transition description. So when the eat event triggers, if this guard condition is true, then we will stay on the eating state. With it, what is the uh, condition? This is it. Eat and food is less than capacity. If it's true, then stay on the eating state. If it's not, we will move and trans transit to the full state. So here is the transition description for this transition. If uh, the, we're talking about the eat uh, event, uh, its guard condition is that if eaten food equals to capacity, then do this behavior. Say I'm full and then transit to the full state and then finally end the process. Now let's take a look at another example, which we're going to demonstrate different states of a cell phone. And everything starts from here. Our first state is the standby state. And if we receive a new call, we will be transited to this state, ringing state, which has a do behavior. And we actually show the do behavior like this. And what is, what is the do behavior? It's playing music. And if we're still in this state and music ends, then play it again. Now, if we're in this state and we reject call, we will be in, then get to the standby state. But if we're here and accept call, we will be transited to the talking state. And uh, after that the call ends, we will be transited to the standby state again. So now let's take a look at the internal behavior state. Here, we're demonstrating an internal behavior state, which is sleep. Its entry point is close your eyes. So, by closing eyes, we will get to the sleep state. What is it going to do? Sleeping. As long as we're in this state, we need to do the sleeping job. And when do we exit the sleep state? by opening eyes. So as soon as we open our eyes, then this, the internal behavior state, which is asleep, ends. So this is also our internal transition of our internal behavior state. When the eyes are opened, then wake up. And that's how we actually exit the sleep internal behavior. Now let's take a look at the composite state. So in here we have a working composite state which in itself uh, we have two sub, uh, sub states thinking and talking. So actually in a composite state we can have two or more uh, state transition processes that each of them can have their own uh, processes. Now let's take a look at our next example, which shows us forks and joins. And they actually help us to demonstrating concurrent states and the states that are going to happen at the same time. So that's all there is to the state machine diagrams. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, 
please don't forget to subscribe to be notified of our upcoming tutorials so see you soon in the next part of the UML tutorial series